panel discussion. I think this is the only panel discussion for the uh, Open Studios Penang for this edition. Uh, besides the talks, we wanted to have a, a round of uh, conversation around, you know, what what is what is art in Penang? What does it mean, and where where it is today, and where is it heading uh, in the next couple of years? Uh, so we have. Uh, panel of uh, distinct, distinguished guests. Uh, they're all involved in the arts in their own way. Um, and I'll just introduce them. Uh, so on my immediate left, uh, we have Hu Fan Chun. Uh, Fan Chun is an artist himself. And he also founded uh, the Run Amok Collective uh, that was uh, uh, located at Hinbus a couple of years back. Uh, it's not there anymore, but the, the, the collective is still somewhat around. <laughs> uh, we don't know. <laughs> Non-active at the moment, but they're they're still around. They're still in contact and all. Uh, and then we have Dr. Doris Hefner. She's an art historian. Her study is focused on uh, mural uh, mural art from the 16th to 18th century. Uh, Dr. Doris is from Germany, and uh, she's been in Penang for about five and a half years. So she's quite familiar with uh, the, the scene locally. Uh, next up, we have Li Kai. Uh, I think a lot of people in Penang know Li, Li Kai. He's a, he's a lawyer by practice, uh, but he's also a huge art collector in Penang. Uh, not only collect, but he's also very involved with, with the art movement locally and from with various communities as well. Yeah, uh, He's also the uh, chairman for the Penang State Art Gallery. Yeah. And next up, we have James Springer. James Springer is a, a journalist writer and he recently published a book called the Malaysia's, uh, Malaysia's Canvas, which revolves around the uh, young colony of artists um, from Hinbas and, uh, and around that from 2010 to 2014. So he captured the early, uh, early beginnings of the street art that you see in, around Georgetown today. So that was recently published, I think, last year. So he'll share some perspective about that. So yeah. So um, let's give a round of applause for and welcome them and uh, your, yourself as well for spending your Saturday afternoon here. Um, so I'm going to kick off with uh, just a little icebreaker question just to kind of know some of these, uh, to, to know these speakers a little personally of how they got involved in the arts in Penang and, and what particularly about art in Penang that has captured their interest. So uh, my question for all the panelists and perhaps we can take five minutes each to share your story. So what has personally drawn you towards the arts in Penang? And if, if you can share any particular moments that kind of like hit you that, you know, like, oh, you know, I'm really impressed with what I've seen here and, and therefore I want to be part of this. Is there any particular moment, if you have any? Would you like to start? What drawn me? Um, I think uh, there was once I saw there's this program where we could learn traditional crafts that was organized by uh, PhD, Penang Heritage Trust. Then I thought uh, it's a very inviting and accessible town in, um, in Georgetown that I get to learn traditional crafts. I've been learning wood carving from a master near Penang Hill. So how it works was the program will match you with uh, artisan like if you want to learn how to sculpt the deities for Hindu temples or to make cloak or uh, nyonya weaving and all sorts of things anyway I chose wood carving and I find uh, I you can't really do that in many different cities but in Georgetown you could learn these traditional crafts and try to incorporate that in your art practice that itself I think is quite fascinating for me personally and I think the best gallery in Georgetown are the, the temples. There's so much to see in the temples than in galleries sometimes, I find, personally. Thank you. I came first to Penang 2006, and there was no mural art at all. There was nothing. There was no heritage. There was not uh, this touristic scenery now, not so many coffee shops, and they are all looking the same. It was very local very normal, it was a normal city and uh, I came from Langkawi and I had one year time and I stayed for a few months in Penang and in Langkawi I did with a local 
artists some marble sculpturing over there and then this was very rural land, yeah, in the Kampung area and when I came to Penang I was fascinated because of the atmosphere and this was the atmosphere of the authentic Penang for me and I struggled nine years back in Germany to find a job in Penang and I came here then again 2013 in November and many things changed there were these mural paintings on the wall and everything and I was thinking oh wow I have now a job in a completely booming art booming city suddenly um, and I think this vibrant atmosphere was the most attractive what I find uh, for me as an artist as well and as an art historian to be part of something which is coming up and you can feel it in the, in the society and you can feel the atmosphere and the vibes. And this is what attracted me besides the heritage atmosphere and the mixture between young, old tradition, modern, urbanized, kampong style, Bali Pula or whatever, and also the young society which we don't have in Europe. We have very old societies. So this young, vibrant, lively society and then this mixture and this mixture of people was which is I feel giving so much energy to artists and so much inspiration. Hi. I've been interested in art since young. I've got a father who was a primary school principal headmaster. A very visionary man. He's an educationist, and um, and he encouraged a lot of things uh, in schools, even for primary schools. So one of which was art. So um, there were lots of art competition being organized in the school levels, and I've always participated in them. I did quite well, uh, but I knew my weakness when you get older. Uh, so painting is definitely not. <laughs> what I'm good at. <laughs> so I'd rather talk about art than painting them. Um, art and education was very closely connected in those years. Um, many a times uh, exhibitions are curated, done by uh, teachers and headmasters. My father was one of them. He would know people like uh, Kusui Ho. Kusui Ho, uh, uh, an artist that I respect a lot. Uh, my father knew him from their teenage years. And Ku Sui Ho, I'm, 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 I think I can proudly say he's someone who, who knew me before I knew him. Because he knew me when I was born. <laughs> so, Uncle Sui Ho. And uh, Ku Sui Ho went on to uh, emigrate to the US. He's now based in Arkansas. Uh, but uh, he's still got a very close connection with Penang. Comes back quite often. Uh, in 2005, he started the Alpha Utara Gallery. Some of you may still recall that. Uh, it was on China Street. And uh, Sui Ho, as a very accomplished artist, actually in the 70s used to run a gallery called the Alpha Gallery in Singapore. Uh, this is one of those galleries that started when uh, not many others was doing or selling art. Um, I think through Alpha Gallery, uh, they inspired companies like UOB uh, to collect art. And now UOB is such an important name in this region, right? In promoting art, having the UOB uh, art competition yearly. So Sui Ho started Alpha Utara in Penang. Utara was the other collective that he started for, for many years. Uh, there used to be one show that I look forward to every year, even as a small boy, the Utara show. Basically, uh, Utara means the North, and this is a collective of artists active in the North of Malaya. And uh, so he started Alpha Utara. So I was very glad that uh, he gave me an opportunity when, because he was shuttling between US and Penang. 
uh, that he asked me to help him manage and curate uh, Alpha Otara Gallery. So in 2005 to 2007, I was given the opportunity to curate about 20 shows um, then. And, and, and that gave me a lot of confidence all right, in, in, in the art community, in uh, talking about art, in looking at art, in curating, in writing. So yeah, that's the story. So um, I think the story that, that I usually uh, tell people about my first fascination with Penang is, is meeting actually a person, one person, Joe Sidek. Um, I met Joe in 2009 along with a, an artist friend, Tom Powell, who I think is involved in the Open Studios uh, 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 Festival. Uh, just released the book actually on Armenian Streets, if you go and have a look. Um, anyway, so we met Joe, and when we first came to Penang, I think in 2009, a bit like Doris, it was a, I think what she said is a normal city. Uh, so there was, there was uh, certainly not the, the art boom that you can see now. Um, but Joe's sort of energy in terms of the arts was first sort of directed at, if anything, Fort Cornwallis. So I remember for months and months we would meet Joe and, and, and build proposals of, of how to make Fort Cornwallis the, the sort of star attraction in Georgetown, which I think, I think now is, it's, it's happening. I mean, it's being renovated and I think it's, it's finally happening, but that's after now sort of uh, nine years, let's say. Uh, and Joe's energy in terms of wanting to do that in Fort Cornwallis, but then a lot of things around Georgetown was... was um, Inspirational, but also um, a bit of an eye-opener. Uh, through Joe, we met quite a solid artistic group here in Georgetown, uh, uh, Fuan Wong, who's uh, sort of uh, uh, Penang's own glass artist, Howard Tan, a very famous local photographer, Jonathan Yun, a jewelry maker. So even though on the surface there wasn't much, much there to look at, maybe much to, uh, to get involved in, there was obviously this kind of what I would call a latent energy in Georgetown, and, and it didn't take an awful lot for it to really spark. So then seeing it uh, transfer through a couple of years up until 2012 and the you know, earnest murals, and then of course the attraction that had for international artists picking uh, Georgetown as a place that they wanted to showcase their work, suddenly w was really the big eye opener for me in terms of you know, something happening at great speed with uh, a lot of a lot of velocity, so I, I would say that those early years, the energy shown by Joe to to try and uh, you know uh, bring art to the public, but also to to raise art's profile in in Malaysia, and then of course the ensuing uh, boon of of street art was was something that I personally could never experience, especially in the West. Um, all the, all the great you you kind of have the impression that all the great artistic areas in London, let's say, or Berlin or even part, you know, Madrid, uh, all over Europe, it's, it's already been done. So to see this kind of resurgence and revival of art on the ground in real time was, was for me, uh, the biggest sort of draw uh, in terms of art uh, in Penang, yeah. Uh, thank you. So there's a mention of, uh, you know, the heritage, a lot of influence of the, from the heritage and culture uh, in Penang and with the arts and, and also a sudden resurgence, like what James has said in the recent years, uh, and how these two kind of like play hand in hand in, in the last couple of years. So um, it seems like you know all of you share a similarity in terms of uh, being attracted or or interested in, in that. Um, a follow up to that. Um, this may sound like a rhetorical question, uh, almost. So, what makes art in Penang unique and different? Um, you could look at look at this question in terms of like regionally and internationally, and also nationally. What in what exactly makes uh, art, vi the visual arts, or even the movements here uh, unique? Uh, perhaps I can start with Likai if you can share your perspective on that. It's a huge topic. <laughs> uh, five. <laughs> five minutes. minutes <laughs> <if you're laughs> All right. Uh, this is a one-day talk. <laughs> um, I must first say that ultimately, art is about the individual artist. It is not like a football game where you need 11 players to have a team. 
right? Ultimately, it's that individual artist doing what he he or she does, all right? And each individual artist doing uh, what they do best, and together you have a community, all right? So um, Penang uh, is a roja. I always say is then right? you talk about eclectism. When we talk about art, uh, over here, when we talk about visual art, we are talking about the Western form of art, all right? Or even the Oriental form of art, which are all relatively new uh, in our country, in Malaysia. In this region, uh, I think the Philippines, Indonesia have a longer history in that. Um, the Malay people traditionally have crafts, right? Not so much of a Western or Oriental art tradition. So all those are, were imported to, uh, let's talk about Penang, all right? To a place like Penang. Um, when the British came in the 18th century, uh, with Francis Light, uh, with the East India Company, uh, there came artists. Uh, we have people like um, Robert Smith, Captain Robert Smith, uh, whom we have a number of uh, uh, very nice uh, uh, oil painting showing uh, Penang right, 200 years ago. Uh, currently, this, the State Museum is, is, is under renovation, so, so you may not be able to have access to that, but uh, go to our the museum website, you will be able to see uh, Captain Robert Smith's work. And then we have people like William Daniel. Uh, these, these are all uh, British Army officers. And uh, Robert Smith himself was an uh, engineer. He's the one who oversaw the uh, building of the St. George Church in town. Um, so those were imported. Uh, he was here about a few years. There were a gap. Uh, we can't s seem to find much from that early uh, 19th century, late 18th century, to about the 20th century. Right? That's not much of a Western art uh, tradition being recorded in Malaysia. Next came the wave of uh, immigrants. Uh, the British imported uh, Indians and Chinese. Right? Uh, there are lots and lots of Chinese coolies that came. Uh, the big wave came late 19th century, early 20th century. And actually with them came lots of their tradition and culture. Uh, you have uh, art from the West and you have art from the East. Out of the uh, pioneer artists, uh, about eight pioneer artists that we, we usually talk about. And out of that eight pioneer artists, five of them uh, were born overseas. Born in China, born in Indonesia. All right, people like uh, Hussein Enna is born in Indonesia. People like Kosia, uh, Li Qingyong, Ko Jupeng. They are all born uh, in China. Yong Man Sen was born in Kuching, uh, recognized as the father of modern watercolor art. Uh, who else is from Malaysia? Uh, Tay Hui Kiet, who was very influential in art education, uh, was born in Nibong Tabal. He's about the, uh, the nearest, uh, the only one that I can name born in Penang, or maybe Abdullah Arif. Uh, so, in that sense, we are, Penang has always been an entrepot, all right? a, a, a city of uh, imports and exports. And that's true for the art as well. And, and that, with that came uh, Western art and Oriental art. Uh, in, actually, in Malaysia, we have a very strong uh, Oriental art or Chinese art tradition. When I say Chinese art, I mean art on rice paper, Chinese ink, and wash. 
uh, somehow these two worlds uh, doesn't collide much. They are like happening in two parallel worlds of uh, the Western art tradition of oil and watercolor and acrylic and the Chinese art tradition. And that's something that we are trying to, uh, to, to bring together more and so to as to create uh, even more interesting interaction. So, so in that sense, Penang uh, is very eclectic because uh, it's a melting pot of all this talent from all over. Yeah. Um, just a short follow-up question to that. You shared about how this, uh, how Penang has such a hit, rich historical, you know, uh, background in terms of eclecticism from from the colonial art. Do you think that has translated to the contemporary art that we have in Penang today? And if Yes, and in what forms do you think you've seen? Um, for me, artists always struggle or talk or explore the issue of identity, who they are. Right? And that is very much connected to where they are from. So, like I say, even the pioneer artists, many of them came from China and elsewhere. And they came with their, uh, many of them, the pioneer artists actually were art graduates from Shanghai and Xiamen and everything. So, so they were not, uh, these are the people who didn't come as coolies. They are not indentured uh, laborers, all right? They came uh, as an, with, with people with art background. And other than those pioneer artists, there are a number, there are five recognized uh, pioneer artists in Singapore as well. And these are the people who came and when they finally decided that this is the place for me to stay, right? Malaysia and Singapore were together, right? This is my home, my country now, my land now. Uh, then the more they talk about identity, and therefore you have the birth of the Nanyang style, because this group of artists went to went around, particularly went to uh, Indonesia, to Bali, and uh, they, they realized that they have to come up with something that reflects uh, where they are. And therefore, you start having this idyllic Malay villages, kampong, sceneries, right? So, so that came, and, and together with what they came with, their, their, their art background, uh, that then, then it gave birth to this called Nanyang style. Uh, I don't know if that answered part of your question. Yeah. Right, thanks, Likai. Um, so based on Likai's sharing on these, uh, the historical background of things, uh, James, you've, you've also recorded lots of uh, movements in the, in the recent years. And based on that and based on your experience uh, in other different countries in the region as well as from your, uh, from your writi writing, uh, what makes the movement here interest, uh, unique? that made you want to capture it in, in, in a book? So I think um, <coughs> Lee Kai is obviously um, spot on. Um, Malaysia's history of art is somewhat new, but it's also very versatile, very um, uh, eclectic, um, based on the people who, who obviously passed through throughout the years. And that translates to crafts and, and stuff like that. Um, I think nowadays, if I, if I speak more, you know, uh, in more modern times, uh, Penang's transformation within the region of Southeast Asia is is synonymous with a Southeast Asian boom. I think uh, most emerging uh, markets around the world, particularly if you look at uh, some countries in Africa, uh, also some places in South America, one of the first, uh, and particularly other other countries in in Southeast Asia, one of the first things to sort of come up is the art scene and it's usually this the street or let's say it more inclusive art scene so an art scene that focuses more on quantity rather than quality so less of a collector's market or an auction market more of a, an inclusive art movement that can include as many artists as possible so at the moment um, Indonesia obviously is a bit more far advanced than, than other places but particularly uh, cities like Saigon um, Hanoi, uh, Phnom Penh as well in Cambodia. Uh, to some, in some respects, Yangon in Burma as well. All, all of these places are, are actually going through the same thing that Penang is sort of blitzed through in the last, in the last eight nine years. Let's say ten years. Just uh, um, so. 
in, t in terms of the movement itself, it's, it's, it's not that unique. I mean, you can look at places a bit further back, let's say, you know, um, uh, first half of the, of the 20th century, particularly 50s, 60s, and you can look at places like Philadelphia, uh, New York, again, uh, Munich, Berlin, London, uh, they all had that sort of art boom, uh, and, and in th that translates into actually names being made. I mean, you have the Jasper Johns and the, the Warhols and the Pollocks and things like that, street artists like, um, uh, what's his name, very famous guy in Philadelphia. So the movement is not unique in itself, but it's, it's definitely unique in terms of um, emerging markets at this moment in time in Southeast Asia, uh, actually, you know, uh, uh, booming and and you know getting becoming um, self-actualized, becoming very independent, becoming much richer, and and this sort of art movement is quite is quite similar around around the whole region. Um, in terms of Penang itself, I think one of the things that potentially quelled a little bit that uniqueness was was the idea that. Um, uh, a lot of, particularly street art, and it is arguably correct, but a lot of the street art had to take on a, a heritage-based subject matter because Penang and Georgetown is such a heritage-based place, and quite rightly so. Uh, art suddenly uh, was forced down the, the heritage subject matter route, but more concerned around mural public art. Um, whereas I think in, in other places they rely on the fact that it's it's actually international perspectives being put up so it is important to have um, either local artists or foreign artists trying to put their ideas or maybe even their identity on canvas or on walls wh which are not completely based on the the locale that they that they work in um, so in that respect Penang is unique in, in the in the sense that a lot of the great art you see here is heritage based and a lot of uh, local artists obviously try to explore that in terms of identity, but a lot of foreign artists explore that in terms of the inf inspiration it gives them. Uh, the amount of arts and crafts, architecture, um, and just general culture, historical culture, has, has given, uh, as I said, a lot of foreign artists time to actually go away, do some really good research on the place, and incorporate some uh, either the aesthetic or the history into a piece that they that they might do. So in that respect, I mean, Penang is, is definitely identifying itself in terms of sort of public mural art and maybe some of the more contemporary stuff based on the unique culture that, you know, Penang has, so I think. Thank you, James. Um, since you brought up the, the mural art that that's um, boomed in, in Penang, um, Dr. Doris, you study mural art from the 16th to 18th century. Based on your study, and of course, uh, perhaps in the recent years internationally, how, how is that then different in Penang from what you have observed uh, about the mural art here? 